Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 19th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Did he had a neat diary this weekend uh, regarding a relatively recent feature in Wireshark. Wireshark is no longer just limited to network traffic. Instead, Wireshark is also able to collect traffic from USB ports. Now, I'm not talking about Ethernet USB adapters, but instead just the raw USB traffic. So this can come in handy if you, for example, do have a either unknown USB protocol and you would like to inspect what data is actually being exchanged with a particular device, or if you're worried that this memory stick that you just got is actually more than that and implements additional functionalities like keyboard drivers and the like. And then about a week ago, of course, we had a big revelation about various flaws in AMD chips. Well, it turns out that some of these flaws may actually also affect Intel chips. In particular, the flaws affecting the AS Media chips. AS Media, that's this company that AMD purchased and it integrated the AS Media USB controller into its chipsets and apparently as part of this integration also integrated a pre-existing backdoor that happened to exist in AS Media's chips. Turns out that Intel also used these AS Media chips and logically may also be affected by this same backdoor. Now, while not all Intel motherboards do contain these particular chipsets, it's very likely that the vulnerable population is actually larger for Intel than this for AMD, just based on the large percentage of these motherboards that do use Intel CPUs. Now, we all know that these days you can't really live without a decent password manager. The only alternative to reuse the same password on different sites, of course, has been exploited many, many times in the past. Now, for many, many years, browsers have offered to save passwords for you, but of course, those features initially were rather weak and save passwords in clear text. Firefox was sort of one of the browsers that started using actually an encrypted password database with a master password. Well, it turns out that this master password, however, was never really all that well protected. This is an issue that has come up from time to time over the last nine years. The latest blog post here by Vladimir Palant is going into this in a little bit more detail that the master password is only hashed with a single iteration of SHA-1. Now, remember, this feature is nine years old, so SHA-1 was a reasonable algorithm to use back then, but even then you probably should have applied it multiple times at least for web applications, for example, often people use 10,000 or more iterations of SHA-1 if you are limited to SHA-1 by your libraries. So try not to use Firefox as a built-in password manager for now and uh, use a third-party wallet, which uh, usually tends to work better anyway because it does tend to work better cross-application. And then we got an interesting issue that affected Cloudflare in particular if you took advantage of Cloudflare's minification service. Minification or minifier is a system where you're taking existing JavaScript or HTML and replace it with more compact HTML or JavaScript. Typically what's being done is that white spaces are being removed, variable names are being abbreviated and comments are being removed where the comment removal is what got Cloudflare into trouble here. The problem is triggered by template literals, which is a relatively new feature in JavaScript. The way this looks in JavaScript is that you have strings that are enclosed in backticks, and these strings can then include expressions in curly braces. 
So the problem now was that if you had something that looked like a comment, basically a slash asterisk inside one of these template literals, well, it's not really a common in this case, but uh, Minifier didn't know that uh, for Cloudflare and removed the piece of code. For the most part, this just led to broken websites, but of course, features like this have been used in the past to come up with a benign code that turns malicious after it runs through a minifier. And since most code review is done before you run the code through minifier, this can then be used to sneak in back doors. Well, that is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.